I'm Marcel Krozik, founder of Lil Jack Marketing, and this is the first interview breakdown. Leadership. There is countless books on the subject, numerous models on the subject, but why is it such a sought after and valuable skill to have? What does being a good leader allow you to accomplish? In this interview breakdown, I had the opportunity to talk to the director of national production for Surla Pro Painters. He's a triathlete and a musician, Mr. Jonathan Eno. We covered a range of topics, including the skill of teaching and leadership development, a common thread all business owners go through, and to be successful, how to be intentional with your time. One book I read early in my career, even before I started Little Jack, I may have been uh, in school still during this time, is a book called 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader, link in bio. Our interview breakdown did cover a lot of the qualities that are in this book. However, my biggest takeaway from our interview is that you can't do this alone. Uh, you can't be the answer, you can't get everything done all by yourself. So let's jump over to the interview and let's hear what Jonathan had to say on the subject. In the company, we have about 375 franchisees. Mm -hmm. uh, of those franchisees, they'll have anywhere between five to uh, 30 different crews mm -hmm. or job site supervisors. And then within each crew or job site supervisor, there's on average 2.75. Right? So oh, not like a quarter of a, of a person, but you know, the crews can range from two to four to five people. On average, it's about two and a half. So um, in our peak season, we will look at, and I'll be in charge of helping train up to 10,000 people. There's 10,000 bodies that yeah. are producing work, putting paint on walls for a certain. And I gotta make sure that all of them are doing it relatively the same and giving yeah. the customer the best experience. What I focus on is the productivity of our supervisors. So how much can we paint within a certain amount of time and making sure that that makes sense. Uh, I look at communication with our supervisor. How well do they communicate with the customer? And then I look at leadership because when you're a painter of a, when you, when you manage a crew, you're not just responsible for your own quality of work. You're responsible for the quality of the entire crew. So leadership and coaching and teaching others how to hit certain expectations when it comes to quality of paint uh, is, is a key factor. I think one of the biggest ahas, right? Um, I've always been a person uh, that grabs the bull by the horns and just forces things to happen. Like an entrepreneur, you know, or you run a small business, sometimes, not sometimes, most you're everything. You are the end all be all and you're the guy that has to make it happen. Now you're going to have some employees that help you along the way, but at the end of the day, you take extreme ownership in the words of Jocko Woman, right? Like yeah. it doesn't matter what these people do at the end of the day, it's your, your work product. Um, what I realized very quickly in this role is I can't control 10,000 painters. I can't just show up and do all the painting work. <laughs> college pro, there was an element of if, if shit was hitting the fan, I could go out and fix it myself. But in, the, in an organization that does well over half a billion dollars of paintwork, I can't be that guy. Mm -hmm. and, and as our franchisees are growing, they can't be that person either. So something that I realized that was really fundamental to leadership or growing an organization is um, collaborating with other teams and the decentralization of training and in information. Mm -hmm. I liked being the guy. I liked being the go-to guy and having all this knowledge in my head and people coming to me and seeing me as the expert. But beyond my ego, I really had to learn that I can't be the expert. I have to give all of my knowledge and skills to other people. Yeah, you can just, yeah. <laughs> Damn it, cats. Uh, so I had to learn really quickly decentralizing all of my knowledge and influencing others to see the need to know the knowledge and collaborating with them um, so that I can work on the next set of knowledge set or problems to grow the business. Yeah. That was an aha for me. I, I myself could not be the expert or the trainer. I had to skill up our, our not just our franchisees and our painters, but yeah. really 
or corporate organization. And then once everyone speaks this level of knowledge or experience or skill set, it allows me to solve this bigger set of problems above them. And then I'm going to teach all those people how to do that. And then I can work on the next series of problems. So I really had to pump the brakes um, and strategize very clearly around what does this graduated learning look like mm -hmm. for everyone in the organization for me to not always be the expert, but continue to grow as the expert in my knowledge and then distribute that knowledge across the system. When you're working with these guys, what is usually the biggest recurring theme? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of things that you put based on, but what is like the, the main theme that's like, hey, you know what? There's a 9% chance this is going to come up working with these guys. Yeah. So what's amazing is that uh, so we have franchisees that have been CEOs of organizations or their own business owners or mm -hmm. successful salespeople. Um, and they've been attracted to sort of a variety of lines. The common thread that I see in uh, a lot of the different businesses as a restrainer for their growth is the franchise owner's own leadership skills and commitment to becoming a better leader or a commitment to uh, identifying their potential. That always comes up. Now, I can teach skills and tactics and these, these things. I can teach how to watch a thing or how to do a thing. But that thing doesn't matter unless the mindset of the leader is, is in place the right way. So the things that franchisees really struggle with is just leading, influencing, and inspiring their people mm -hmm. so they can grow the business because the franchisee can't do everything, just like I was saying. They, they can't do all the sales. They can't produce all the work. They can't do all the administrative. They can't do all the money side. It's too much to watch. So what do we learn? We learn that from his experience, and I can agree that I've gone through this too, that in order to be successful, especially when it comes to leading a team and working with other people, you have to let go of your ego. You can't be the go-to person to answer and solve every problem. So in the sense is you have to be able to teach your skills or get people that are just as good, if not better than you, working together in a common direction for a common vision. And as a leader, it comes down to you to teaching this and recognizing it and helping them be the important people and those cornerstones to the business to help it grow and scale as you need it to. Well, I hope you had fun and learned something today with our interview breakdown. In the description below, I'll go ahead and put links to everything we talked about today, uh, including the books, the models, and any other references that uh, you could potentially use to help you along your uh, journey of becoming a better leader. And until next time, thank you very much for watching.